of you tremble at this word? I'm going to ask again, how many of you tremble at the book? You know, the spirit of Herod is in the church today. The spirit of Herod. Herod stood before John the Baptist, this mighty prophet of God. And he loved the preaching of John. He loved to go and say, John's a good preacher. I believe he went back to his palace marveling at this powerful word that came forth. But he didn't obey the preaching of John. Never did get through to him. It's the spirit of Herod. Nothing changes in the house. I'm going to read to you Amos 5, 10. Don't turn, just listen to it. They hate him who reproves in the gate. They hate the man who reproves in the gate. They abhor him who speaks with integrity. You know where the persecution is going to come before Jesus comes? It's not coming from the government. The church is going to be persecuted, but the only people going to be persecuted are those who step out of the world and its system and walk in absolute holiness before the Lord. And it's going to be the carnal Christian who's going to persecute the separated holy ones that are walking the truth. Ezekiel 8, verse 17. And he said to me, Do you see this son of man? Is it too light a thing for the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they've committed here? That they've filled the land with violence and provoked me repeatedly? For behold, they are putting the twig to their nose. They're putting the twig to the nose. Look this way, please. In Old Testament times, if you wanted to show a sign of disrespect, you went out and found a stick. You picked up the stick. You held the stick under your nose and you flipped the stick. It was called putting the twig to the nose. In modern times, we threw away the twig. We used the thumb. And God is saying, my people are thumbing their noses at me. You're provoking me. He said, I thunder at you in love. I speak to you in love. He said, you provoke me with your abominations. You're filling the land, your mind with your violence. And I come to you and I say, enough. And you hold the twig to your nose. You thumb your nose at me. I've seen that. I've seen people walk out of my meetings lately. Thumbing their nose at me and thumbing their nose at you. Thumbing their nose at Almighty God. So we'll not hear it. They hate those. They despise those who preach the truth at the gates. Listen closely. There's a false peace that's settled over the house of God that's going to damn millions of Christians to hell. They have a false peace. They're going to hell under a cloud of false peace. Deuteronomy 29. Lest there shall be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord your God to go and serve the gods of those nations. There shall be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit wormwood. It shall be when he hears the words of this curse that he shall boast, saying, I have peace, though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart in order to destroy the water land and the dry. I have peace, even though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. Doesn't that shake you up? There are people sitting here right now that nothing I can preach tonight, no matter what revelation God would give me, no matter how loud I could thunder, They'll walk out of here carrying their false peace, carrying their idolatry and their sin with them. My knees tremble when I hear people say, I have nothing to repent over. Repentance is not an act, it's a way of life. It's a way of living before God with an open heart. Repentance is simply coming to the Lord and say, shine the light, shine the light. Let there be no place dark in me. Let there be nothing hidden in my heart. I want to look God in the eye. I want to look the whole world in the eye. I don't look any prophet in the eye. I'm not afraid. God, bring it face to face with His holiness tonight. Don't stir us to change us until you work so deep in our hearts. Not a word I've said has gotten through to you unless you say, God, I'm going to face this. I'm going to face these idols in my life. If this is true and the Holy Ghost is saying something about these things in my home, then, oh God, I'm going to deal with them honestly before you. I'm going to deal honestly. I'm not going to put it off anymore. If you would be so convicted by that, do it and then drawn by the Holy Spirit in the secret closet of prayer, you begin to weep and say, Jesus, I need you now. Nothing stands between us. Something has gotten a hold of us. And until you pulverize, until you say in Jesus' name, 
I will not be seduced by the devil anymore. I turn against this world. And I'll tell you, the darker the world gets and the more compromise there is, the more God has to have a separated people. The more God has to have a testimony in these days.